morning and welcome to worship with us here online. Uh, may the peace of the Lord be with you. Friends, today we wrap up our sermon series and this focus that we've been journeying with around our identity in Christ. Today we get to unpack the theme of being sent, our identity that we are people. We are Christ's people who are sent out into the world. And so I'm really excited to hear what Trevor Hudson has on his heart uh, as the Holy Spirit has been working in him and, and as he's been preparing to bring us this message this morning of what it is to be a people who are sent. Today is also our covenant service here at Northfield Methodist Church. In the Methodist Church, we traditionally gather early in January to celebrate all the good that God has done for us and affirm that we give our lives and our choices to God. And so we do this by sharing in a prayer that John Wesley wrote called the Covenant Prayer. This prayer is all about surrendering our lives to God, to God in love and joy. During this online service, as we get to the point, the moment where we're sharing this prayer, there'll be an opportunity for us to engage and participate. And so watch out for the words of this prayer in the comments and the chat boxes across the social media platforms that you are joining us with today. And so as we gather on this Covenant Sunday, we still our hearts for worship. And as we do that, I'm reminded of the words that Jesus spoke to Nicodemus. He said, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. And those who do what is true and they come to the light, they will then clearly see the deeds that have been done in God. And so this is telling us that our God is a God of second chances. Today as we share in this covenant prayer, we commit ourselves to a fresh start. And we acknowledge that we are making a covenant as individuals in our homes, on our couches, but we are also doing it as a community of Christ. The church, Northfield Methodist Church, but the universal church that gathers on this Sabbath day. Friends, as we seek to embrace our identity that is found in Christ, as those who are loved, those who are made new, those who are chosen, those who are sent, we do this so that our lives may be transformed and our minds renewed. Jesus promises each one of us life in all of its fullness. And today as we gather for worship and we participate in this covenant moment, we get to sing songs of praise to our God. We get to offer prayers from the depths of our heart to our God. And we get to spend time as we are saturated by the Word of God. And so my prayer is this morning as we get ready to celebrate and worship our God, may each one of us celebrate the life. Celebrate the life that is found in Christ Jesus our Lord and our Savior. Amen. Let us worship together. Good morning, church. Welcome to our service this morning. It's a very special service as we look forward to saying the covenant prayer together. But before we do that, let's prepare our hearts as we worship our Savior King. So 
Well, it's uh, really, really good to uh, be with you again at uh, Northfield Methodist on this uh, Covenant Sunday. And uh, for our reading, I invite you to to come with me uh, to Genesis uh, chapter 12. It's a a very well-known part of the Old Testament in which God enters uh, into covenant uh, with Abram. And I just want to read to you uh, the first the first three verses. And now the Lord said to said to Abram, Go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation, and I and I will bless you and make your name great so that so that you will be a blessing i will bless those who who bless you and the one who curses you i will curse and in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed And so we thank God uh, so much for that reading and we pray that uh, through that reading uh, on this Covenant Sunday, uh, God will speak uh, to you uh, and to me. I want to extend uh, an invitation to you today and it's an invitation that uh, in the Methodist Church Uh, we extend uh, to everyone. You don't have to be a Methodist uh, once a year. And it's an invitation uh, today for you and for me uh, to renew our covenant with God. To say to God, God, thank you so much uh, that you love us Thank you so much that you have chosen us. Thank you so much that you've made us new. Now we want to offer ourselves to you. We want to say to you, Lord, uh, here we are, here we are. Uh, Send us, send us into your world uh, to live as your covenant people. And that's the invitation, a challenging invitation that I want to, uh, to offer to you and to myself today. So come with me again just for a moment uh, to that reading that I shared with you a little earlier, that moment when God enters into this covenant with Abram. And I want you just to notice very quickly that it has two parts. On the one hand, God says to Abram, Abram, uh, I will bless you. I will bless you. Uh, I will bless you with my direct presence. I will bless you with my direct power. And that's that's what God says to to each one of us in Jesus Christ. Uh, I want to bless you with my, uh, I want to bless you with my, my loving presence and my loving power. I want you to know that you are cherished and loved and valued. And then on the other hand, uh, God says to Abram, uh, not only will I bless you, but I want to make you a blessing so that all the families of the earth uh, will be blessed uh, through you. You see, and that's the challenging invitation. Uh, for you and for me today. It's for us to say to the God who enters into covenant with each one of us, to say to God, here we are, here we are. Send us into your world to bring your blessing uh, to each person that we meet. Now, there's a question here, isn't there? Uh, And the question is a critical one. You know, how how do we do this? How do we we actually bring blessing to others? 
I don't think it means that we go around to everyone saying, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. How do we bring blessing um, to the person to whom we're married? How do we bring blessing to our children, our grandchildren? How do we bring blessing to uh, our colleagues who share our workspace? How do we bring blessing to those who live in the same con complex as us, the same retirement home, who live in the house next door to us in, the, in our street? How do we bring blessing to those who suffer very deeply, to those who do not have access to resources that often we take for granted? How do we bring blessing uh, to those uh, who are dying? It's, a, it's really a very, very critical question. And I've just been thinking about that a bit and uh, want to offer to you, if I may, some thoughts that I have. And as always, as I offer these thoughts to you, I really pray that somehow, that somehow God will speak a very, very personal word uh, to each one of us. I want to suggest, first of all, you know, that we bless people uh, when we see them. When we see them. Has it ever struck you that the very first miracle in the book of Acts, it happened because Peter and John, as they were walking to the temple, they saw that lame man outside the temple. They had passed by him many, many times. But on this particular day, they saw him. They saw him. And they said to him, look at us. You know, and it's when we're able to really see each other that miracles really can happen uh, in our midst. I don't know if you would agree with me, but, but I think deep down in the human heart, deep down in the human heart, we long, we long to be seen. Uh, almost every day I get uh, videos of our grandchildren and uh, I, watch, uh, I watch their parents interact with them. And so often I hear uh, these, uh, these two-year-olds saying to their parents, Daddy, watch me. Mom, look at me. They want to be seen. They want to be seen. I remember uh, going to um, watch my son uh, play a game of cricket. I think he must have been eight years of age. Um, his hero was Alan Donald. And I don't know if you remember, but whenever Alan Donald took a wicket, he would kind of celebrate by going into aeroplane mode and he would run around the pitch um, kind of like an aeroplane. And Mark would practice the celebration in the lounge. Uh, and I knew that when he, he took his, his next wicket, this was the way that he was going to celebrate. And I was watching him one day, and he came and he bowled. He bowled this guy out. And uh, I thought to myself, now it's going to happen. He's going to do the Alan Donald celebration. But he didn't. The first thing he did, I'll never forget it was that he turned around and he looked towards me to see if I had seen him. He wanted to be seen. We all want to be seen. We want to be seen as human beings. I remember I had a, a, a blood test appointment uh, a few months ago and uh, at, at, half, at half past three and I was sitting in the reception room and the, and the nurse came to me and said, are you the 3.30 blood test? And I said, no, my name is Trevor. <laughs> I wanted to be seen. I wonder if today we can ask God, uh, you know, for the grace to see each other, to see each other as image bearers, to see each other with a sense of wonder and reverence and awe. And especially, especially to see those who often feel invisible in our midst. Have you noticed uh, how difficult sometimes it is just when a beggar approaches you to actually look at them? 
to actually look at them as an image bearer. We bless people when we see them. But can I, can I just go one step further? Can I say that, that we bless those around us? We bless those around us when we affirm them. You know, Jesus, Jesus, the unique Son of God in his humanity, also needed to be affirmed. And you remember that moment when he goes down to the River Jordan and John the Baptizer is there and he gets baptized and the Spirit comes upon him and he hears the affirming voice of his Father. Do you remember? And the Father says to him, You are my Son, my beloved. I delight in you. And that for Jesus is a moment moment of profound affirmation and now he's ready to minister someone once said to me Trevor you know human beings don't live by bread alone but they also live by every word of affirmation that is spoken to them we have a deep need to be affirmed, don't we? And some of us, some of us carry very, very deep emotional wounds because, because when we were young, there wasn't someone in our life, usually our father, who, who affirmed us. And we never heard those words, you know, I'm really proud of you. I'm really proud of you, daughter. I'm really proud of you, son. Each of us need to hear that somewhere in our depths. And when we don't hear it, it somehow causes us often to limp through life. I want to suggest that one of the deepest, deepest ministries that we can bring to those around about us um, is to affirm, is to affirm grandparents can I invite you can I invite you to to really affirm the grandchildren in your life and your own children as well to let them know that they really really matter parents can I invite you to affirm your children to give them a sense that 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 their life is is precious to you that you're proud of them those of you who manage teams, can you, can you express to, to those in your team, can you express appreciation? Coaches, say to your players, you know, you, you played well here, you played well here. I'm not talking about empty flattery. I'm talking about a genuine, genuine affirmation that we can extend uh, to those around about us. I'll never forget a moment in my life. I was in my mid-40s, and I was, on, I was going for a long walk with, a, with a, a person about 20 years my senior, someone I, I had a great, great deal of respect for. And as we were walking along, this person just suddenly stopped, and he turned to me, and he said to me, Trevor, you're not stupid. And somehow that was a, that was a, a, it was a kind of affirmation in my heart and my mind that has stayed with me forever. And so we bless others when we, when we see them. We bless others uh, as we affirm them. But there's one last thing I want to say. We, 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 we become agents of blessing when we, when we give our own lives away so that others can be resourced for their lives. We affirm others when we give away our own time and energy and resources so that others perhaps can flourish. On my... Uh, Twitter feed the other day, I, I saw a photograph of a, of a young guy, he must have been in his early 30s, and he had just got his PhD at Wits in neuroscience, and he was standing uh, with his grandmother, and in his tweet he, he was just thanking her, because uh, throughout his life, 
she had had as a domestic worker, had, had held three different jobs uh, each, each month in order, in order to resource him uh, for his own studies. She had, she had literally given her life away so that his life could flourish. And you know, when I looked at that photograph, what struck me, they were standing together. She seemed to be filled with an even greater joy uh, than, he, than he reflected. And I remembered the words of, of Stanley Jones, that great Methodist uh, missionary to India, who said, you know, there are two groups of people in this world. There are those who live for themselves. They're the most miserable bunch you find. And then there's a small group of people who've given their lives away so that others can be blessed. And their lives are filled with a wild, wild joy. <laughs> And I could see that in that photograph. And that's what happens when we give our lives away to bless others. We come alive. And Jesus said, you know, if you, if you want to hold on to your life, you lose it. But if you lose your life for my sake, you find it. And so today, that's the invitation. It's the invitation for us to renew our covenant with God, to say to God, God, thank you. Thank you so much for the blessing of your presence and power and love in my life. And today I renew my covenant with you. I offer myself to you. And I ask you, Lord, to send me, to send me into your world, your world which, which is characterized by cursing, Send me into your world to bring blessing to each person that I meet. Today, I invite you to say to the Lord, Lord, here I am. Send me as an agent of your blessing. Amen. One way of uh, renewing uh, our covenant with God is to pray the uh, actual covenant prayer. And uh, people have been praying this prayer now literally uh, for centuries. And it's a prayer in which we, uh, in which we really uh, say to the Lord, Lord, will you send me? Uh, I want to be yours. So I'm going to read it very, very slowly. And, uh, and if you have the freedom to do so, uh, you may like to make this prayer. Uh, your own today. Lord, I'm no longer my own, but yours. Put me, put me to, to what you will. Rank me with whom you will. Put me to doing, put me to suffering. Let me, let me be employed for you. Let me be laid aside for you, exalted for you brought low for you. Let me be full. Let me be empty. Let me have all things. Let me have nothing. I freely and wholeheartedly yield all things to your pleasure and disposal. And now, glorious and most blessed God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, you are mine and I am yours. So be it. And may the covenant now made on earth, let it be ratified in heaven. Amen. Now unto him who is able